Lesson 5-2, part 1. <coughs> Lesson 5-2 in general is properties of exponents and radicals. Today we are focusing on the properties of exponents. Specifically we're using rational exponents. So what you see up at the top is review. Those are exponent rules that you have seen before. I'm not saying you remember them, so that's why they're up there, so we can review. Okay. But um, when you multiply two powers, recall that if the base is the same, the shortcut is to keep the base the same and add, add the, the exponents. exponents. Um, the quotient over here, if you're dividing two powers, if the base is the same, keep the base the same and subtract. subtract. Power of a power. When you're raising a power to a power, there's where you multiply. So we don't have two bases the same now. We're raising a power to a power. You're multiplying powers. If you have a product inside here, the idea is that this power goes with not just the B, but it also goes with the A. So the fact that a power outside would go with everything multiplied together on the inside. That doesn't apply if there's adding or subtracting inside, but if it's a product inside. Negative exponents. We mentioned them yesterday. And a lot of you said you, you didn't really remember doing that this year. Not that you hadn't seen it, but this year. So negative exponent, in order to get rid of a negative exponent, you move it to the denominator. When you go to do homework, it will usually say, you know, write this with rational exponents. Do not leave any negative exponents. So if you get a negative exponent, always move it to the denominator. And then I threw this one on because it comes up at least once today. Anything raised to zero power is equal to one. one. Okay, so that's just a good one to remember there. Now, I'll be honest, they didn't give us easy examples. Mm -hmm. And they didn't give us easy examples in the homework. Now, some of these look a lot worse than what they really are. Uh -huh. Some of them, they're going to take a little bit of work. Let's but see. it's pulling all of our properties together. Okay? okay. So, as we look at A, 81 to the 5 sixth times 81 to the negative 1 third. What's the property? What, what do I need to think about doing here? Like terms are like. Well, if you, okay. if equal. So it's actually a negative uh, two over six. Uh -huh. So equal fractions. What? Yeah. Okay, you're getting a common denominator there. Is that yeah, what you're doing? Common, you don't just say. Okay. So before we get to that, though, my bases are the same, yes? Yeah, they are. If my bases are the same, and they have powers, how do we multiply? Uh, and that goes back to? Product of powers. Right there. If the bases are the same, you multiply them together by keeping the base the same and adding the powers. So I'm going to think of this as 81 to the 5 sixth plus negative one third. That's using the product property there. Are we okay with that? Mm -hmm. You oh. keep the base the same, oh. and then you add the powers. Now, All right. this is where what Landon said comes into play. How do I add five sixths and negative one third? Uh, you need a common denominator. denominator. Mm -hmm. Three can become six by multiplying by okay. two. And so I'm gonna write this out in a lot of steps. It's going to be 5 sixths plus negative 2 sixths. Yep. What is 5 sixths plus negative 2 sixths? Yeah. 5 plus negative 2 is? 3. 3. So I have 81 to the 3 sixths. What's super nice about 3 sixths? It's 1 half. It's one half. So then we have 81 to the 1 half. Now, some of these you get to leave today, and you get to stop there when there's a fraction exponent. This one, I can guarantee you, Savas is going to count you wrong if you stop right here. What? What does the 1 half power do? It divides it by 2. No, it doesn't divide it by 2. See? Square roots it. Recall from yesterday, 81 to the 1 half. If we put that under the radical, so my rules from yesterday have not gone away, this is 81 
and that two tells us it's a square root. Oh, well, I wouldn't worry necessarily about putting it under the square root if I couldn't do the square root, but can we do the square root of 81? Nine. Square root of 81 is nine. nine. That's it? That's it. Well, Not much else you can do with nine. That wasn't that Now, and that's one that I think it looked worse than what it was. Well, D okay. looks like from I'd see it. Okay, let's go to B. And as I said, they're not all they're not all easy, they're all difficult. It's a mixed bag here. Okay. So B. We have some multiplying happening. But we have but before we multiply, we have a power outside parentheses, yes? What do we know about that two thirds power? It's gonna have to go with everything. Meaning it goes with the b to the one half, and it goes with the a. a. So okay. A, so a b one half is a, and then b like this on like a b. Yeah. Half. When we so a b to the one half, if you're following what Aaron's asking, that is a times b to the one half. Is that what you were? Yep. Okay. So now I'm going to carry down with two a to the one third. It's not changing right now. Now, what what power does A currently have? It's just a 1. No, it's got the 2, 3. But then we're going to put the 2, thir two thirds on it. Oh. I don't know how you distribute. You distribute. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Now, so we're going to have here, and if you think about this, it's A to the first. And what is 1 times 2 thirds? 1 times 2 thirds is 2 thirds. Now, when we go to do B, 1 half raised to the 2 thirds power. What's it say we do when it's a power raised to a power? It's a double power. You multiply. MN means M times N. So here I'm going to, and I'll do this math off to the side for you, one-half times two-thirds. What is one-half times two-thirds? Okay. I heard one-third, I heard two-sixths. Both are correct, yes. But two-sixths, you would take another step and say one-third. Okay. Now, me personally... I would cross cancel the twos, and then I'm at I'm at one third. Although nothing wrong with multiplying and saying two sixths and then reducing to one third, as long as you reduce. So I'm going to have b to the one third. Okay. So we did a power to a power here. Now I'm not done. And here's how I know I'm not done. I still have multiple A's in this problem. <laughs> okay? Now, first of all, 2A to the one-third, realize you can think of that as 2 times A to the one-third. So I have 2 times A to the one-third times A to the two-thirds times B to the one-third. The 2 is going to be part of my final answer. B to the one third is going to be part of my final answer. The A's have the same denominator. Denominator, yes, but also oh, the okay. same base. base. They're both A's. So what's the rule when the base is the same? Add, add the exponent. Keep the base the same and add the exponents. So this is going to be 2 times a to the one-third plus two-thirds oh, <laughs> times b to the one-third. Now, some of you skipped over this step probably and went ahead and wrote the final answer. That's fine. Oh. What do we know about one-third plus two-thirds? It's one. It's one, yes. It's three-thirds, but we know that three-thirds is one. Guys, focus up here. 
So I have 2, A to the first, B to the one third. And if you want here, one third plus two thirds is three thirds, which is one. So that, that there is our answer? This there is our final answer. The only way it would not be your final answer is if they wanted it in radical form instead of exponent form. I think this is what they'll want. Like from the ones I tried and played around with in Savas, I feel like this is what they want. Wait, what's radical form? Now, radical form, how else can we rewrite B to the one third? Uh, point right? No. Oh, all right. B to the one third is what? The yeah, isn't it? Three. Three, that's three. That's B. Cube root of B. I'm not right. Here's what I'm going to say, guys. From what I was seeing, Savas was wanting more the exponent answers here. Okay? However, when I was looking in the book, they were giving, sometimes they were giving the answers with radicals. And this goes back to our rules we learned yesterday, yes? Remember, the denominator is the index. So that goes back to that rule from yesterday. But I expected you to remember the rule overnight, not forget it. Okay? <laughs> Questions about the this one? Okay. Let's look at the example C then. Woo! Uh, let's go. As you start to look at example C, you have it on your paper. X is 7 eighths, Y to negative 3 fifths, times X to negative 4 thirds, times Y to the 3 fifths. Thoughts? Well, I got one right here. <laughs> the Y's are the same in the sense, but this one's negative, so shouldn't that just cancel? Possibly. Boom. So what we need to consider here is we have basically four terms be multiplied together. X to some power times Y to some power times X to some power times Y to some power. Which pieces go together? X and Y. X's go with X's. Y's go with Y's. Y's goes with Y's. So I'm going to rewrite this. And the idea... That it's x to the seven eighths times x to the negative four thirds. What happens when we go to multiply those x's? Uh, when you multiply, you well, when you multiply, you add. We're gonna keep the x the same. Right, but you but we don't have the same denominator. And we're gonna add. That's an improper fraction. Seven eighths. And negative four thirds. Now, before I go any farther, I'm gonna go back and grab the y's, but we will have to get a common denominator here in a moment. So those were my x's. My y's were negative three fifths and positive three fifths. So when I go to look at this, it's gonna be y to the, we're gonna add these powers, negative three fifths plus three fifths. That's the official. Aaron already mentioned, it looks like it cancels out, right? And it does. It does. Okay, I'm just showing the official math of why it's going to cancel out. Now, how do I do 7 eighths plus negative 4 thirds? We need common denominator. Wait. Okay, guys, focus. What's the common denominator between 8 and 3? 8 and 21, 24. 24? But I have a question about the why. So Hold on, I'll get to the why's in a moment. All right, all right. You're a step ahead of me. I'll get there. Okay. Seven eighths. Eight times what is 24? Three. Three. So seven times three? Trace. <laughs> seven times what? Trace. Trace equals yeah, yeah. Trace 21. Okay. Negative four thirds. Three times what is 24? Eight. eight. So what do I do to the top? Multiply. Multiply by eight. 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 Four times eight? Six. Thirty-two. 
<laughs> the math skills are leaving a little to be desired. Here, Goodness, it's a good thing, thing I can use properties and vector components. But I okay. Can, I can now, this one over here. What do we know about? Well, I'll go ahead and just write it like this for the moment. Uh, uh, what is negative three fifths plus three fifths? Zero. 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 And okay. Any zero property is one. Okay. Boom. So, okay. X is, what is 21 24ths plus negative 32 24ths? Negative nine. Negative 11. I like the second answer better. Yeah, me too. Okay. I'm going to bring this over here. So we're going to have x to the negative 11 24ths. Anything raised to 0 is 1. one. one. Do I need to write a times 1? Uh, no. So I have x to the negative 11 24ths. Now, I can guarantee Savas is going to say to something about no negative exponents. So they're not going to want this for a final answer. They're going to want you to go one more step. What's that step? How of a negative exponent? Fraction. Move it to the denominator. So when I move this to the denominator, it's going to be x to the 11 24th in the denominator. Nothing else in the problem, so there's a 1 on top. So 1 over x to the 11 24ths. Okay. That goes back to that rule I talked about yesterday. It's also up at the top. So by putting the 1 up there, we just got rid of the negative? Well, by moving it to the denominator, we got rid of the negative exponent. The one was we have to put something in the numerator. There's nothing else in this problem. So by default, we put a one. If there was another piece of this problem, we might have that up there, which we'll talk about in the next example. Okay. You know when you have questions. In the meantime, have you started looking at D? Oh. A to the 3 halves, B to the negative 4 thirds, all raised to the 4 fifths. Distribute. Okay. I wouldn't officially call it distribute, but are you guys following this thinking there? Yeah. Officially, it's not distribute, but what? I know what you're saying. The idea that this 4 fifths has to go on the A to the 3 halves and the B to the negative 4 thirds. Now. What do we do with the three halves and the four fifths? Three halves. Four fifths. It's a power raised to a power, so we're going to multiply. Oh. What is three halves times four fifths? Okay, wait. Power oh, yeah. Six hour routine. <laughs> 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 cross multiply. No. Nope. That's okay. You can multiply across and then reduce. Or we can cross cancel and then multiply across. So we could say 12 over 10. Your multiplication is really scaring me, guys. We could say 12 over 10, which reduces to 6 over 5. Or what I tend to do, divide by 2, divide by 2, and then multiply across, and I have 6 fifths that way. Either way we do this, we have A to the 6 fifths. Hmm. B has a negative 4 thirds raised to a power of 4 fifths. What are we going to do with negative 4 thirds and 4 fifths? We're going to multiply. Yes. Negative 16 over 15. Because negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. 3 times 5 is 15. 
Well, Savas is going to say no. And here's the deal. I say Savas, but any math program, any math teacher is going to traditionally say we don't leave negative exponents in our answers. Oh, We're God. done in the fact that I have an A and a B. Can I put A and B together? No, they're two different bases, so they're staying as separate bases. But one of these has a negative exponent. How do I get rid of the negative exponent? Put it on the denominator. Move it to the denominator. Now, so what moves to the denominator? B. B to the negative 16 fifteenths. Because B to the 16 fifteenths and A is a pop. Does A need to move to the denominator? No. No, it has a positive exponent already. So we're going to keep A to the 6 fifths on top and move B to the 16 fifteenths down to the denominator. Moving that B to the denominator changes it to a positive exponent. And unless they want this in radical form, I'm done here. Okay. Let's try E when you're ready. I'm never ready. I'm always, I'm always ready. Okay. Thoughts on E? Because there's two different ways we could start here, in all honesty. Anyone have a spot that they're thinking maybe they would start? Okay. Take that power of two-thirds, and it's going to go on. All of that is multiplied together there. So it's going to go on everything in that fraction, both top <coughs> and bottom. So realize this two-thirds is going to go on the x. It's going to go on y to the third and... It's going to go on the x to the 1 half. Okay? This is a power raised to a power again. So when we do this, it was just x. When we raise it to 2 thirds, that's going to become x to the 2 thirds. What about y? It's y to the third raised to the 2 thirds. What do we do with the 3 and the 2 thirds? We're going to multiply them. Power raised to a power, you multiply. So 3 times 2 thirds is what? 2? Or 6 over 3, yes. But 6 over 3 is going to become 2. I personally, I mean cross canceler, so I would cancel my 3s. So this is going to be y to the second over, we have x to the one-half raised to the two-thirds. Again, what do I do when I raise a power to a power? You're going to multiply. One-half times two-thirds is two-sixths or one third. So I have x to the one third on bottom. Now, I went with, you guys saw the two thirds that you want to raise each piece to, so I went with that direction. There's another direction we could have started, and that's fine though. However, we're not done here. Thoughts on why we might not be done? There's an x on top and an x on bottom. You should only have an x one place or the other, not both. Now, I'm not sure we've used it today. What's the rule when we have a, two bases that we are, when the bases are the same and we're dividing? <laughs> we're going to subtract the exponents. Okay, so when we do this, because my x's are the same here, right? We're going to say that this is going to be x to the 2 thirds minus 1 third. 
Okay, so basically you're moving that x to the one-third up top so you can subtract it. And then we're still going to have the y. y squared. What is two-thirds minus one-third? One-third. One-third. So I'm going to have x to the one-third, y to the second. I think Savas is going to want you to leave it like this. However, this is an example that I could see them saying, write it with a radical. I really don't think they did, though. I think it was just the book doing that when I was looking at examples. So, but good practice. If we keep the y squared outside, what do we know about x to the one third? It is what? It's the cube root of x. So the other way to write this would be y squared times the cube root of x. Okay. One more. One more. Then we're done. Okay. One more. Power three, guys. Let's go. What are we doing? To show you. This one half goes with the three. Oh, there's no, there's no actual y. And with the thirty-two to two fifths. So, on top, I'm going to have three to the one half. One half. On bottom. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. To the. To the uh, two or five plus. Not plus. Time, time, time. 2 over 5 times 1 over 2. 2 over 5 times 1 over 2 is going to be 1 over 5. One over five. Okay, okay. Got it? Not it. Okay. We did this four times yesterday, so today is going to be a fifth time. Four. 32 to the 1 fifth really means the fifth root of 32. Is the fifth root of 32 doable? Yep. Yeah, that's what we talked about a lot yesterday, didn't we? Now, on top, it's 3 to the 1 half, which means the square root of 3. Can we do the square root of 3? No. no. So options here. I can leave it as square root of 3 on top. And then what's the fifth root of 32? 2. 2. We could consider that done. Or if you backtrack, what's the other way to write the square root of 3? That's 3 to the 1 half over 2. In all honesty, I don't know. In my opinion, this first answer would make more sense here. Is that what they're going to want? I don't know. So recognize now. Earlier when Aaron said, are we done, after, when it said 32 to the 1 fifth. If this had been a one we couldn't simplify, would we have been done here possibly? Like, yeah, very possibly. Like 33. But you have to watch for pieces you can simplify. Okay? Okay. Your homework is lesson 5.2, part 1 in Savas. And it is due Monday. Okay?